Now, uh, we have a guest that's probably going to surprise everyone that this guest is coming on an Alt Right podcast, but we are certainly thrilled to have her. Right here we have Faith Goldie of Rebel Media. How are you doing, Faith? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. I'm thrilled. Thank well, you, well, it's my pleasure. Uh, uh, so, were you here throughout the event? Absolutely, through all of it. And actually, I was right there during the uh, car attack while all of the police were storming your demonstration and completely a wall when uh, Antifa and BLM decide to launch their own without permit sort of a, a demonstration. So yeah, I was there in the thick of it throughout it all. Right. Well, uh, you've been reporting on. Uh, I've seen lots of videos of you where you were at these. I guess we'll call them cultural clashes. Absolutely. Where you know, a demonstration, a counter demonstration. Have you ever seen one go down this way before? No, absolutely not. I think that the police failed on many, many accounts here on many fronts. I think that the fact that the um, police came in when you guys all had your permits and you sure showed up in hordes, and I, I, I salute you all for doing just that. Um, not a Roman salute, guys. <laughs> 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 but um, uh, yeah, you, you guys showed out, you, you, you crossed all your T's, dotted all your I's, did everything the legit way, and then what happened was that these, these police in full riot gear come shut you down, and then they quarantine everyone into these little mini riots, and um, it, I, I've never seen anything like this, where two, three hours after the scheduled event was supposed to happen, Antifa all of a sudden, and BLM all of a sudden decide that they know exactly where to meet, where they're going to stage their little march through the streets. And I'm telling you, I saw cops in full riot gear all day, day long. All of a sudden, there wasn't a single man and or woman in uniform, although it was mostly men, let's be honest, in uniform anywhere while this was all going down. It, it just, it was very dodgy. And I mean, besides the helicopter cr crashing and God rest the souls of, of, of the men who, who were there, um, massive failures on the police front this today. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that stuff has to be planned. And it has to be coordinated with the people that they are helping and disappearing for. And one of the things that has been a big uh, uh, narrative with the alt-right is that, and it's happened a lot of times before, like I attended the demonstration, or, or I've intended to attend Richard Spencer's first speech at A&M that was a huge media thing, but I couldn't get in because of Antifa and BLM and such. And when it came time uh, for the face-off of Antifa, this was before the alt-right was coming out in force, it was myself and nine other guys who had answered the call from Daily Stormer to meet me there. And we were faced with between four and 500 Antifa and BLM, uh, according to the local media, and I believe for once the local media was being accurate, and when it came time to put up the metal barriers, the police came up and put them up directly at our backs so that we could not escape. Wow, and that's what you see all the time though. They keep on leading groups on the right, specifically the alt-right, into these death traps where basically they find themselves surrounded. Not to mention the fact that the microphone today, as I understand it, was kept on the other side of the barricades. And so far as the police were basically signaling to the guys at, of the alt-right, who again have legal permits, mm -hmm. you're not going to be talking today. Um, that, that's not, that might be on your schedule, but that's not part of what we have planned here. And from a cultural point, circling back to what you were saying earlier, I have never seen anything like this. I mean, all, all the violence and all that stuff aside, um, Thank you. I think that anyone in their right mind, if they've been following news events, if they've been following uh, alt-right events, uh, know that this was the biggest gathering of the alt-right so far. And I think that if the, uh, people from all over, never mind the country, the continent, I'm a Canadian and I've, I've met fellow Leafs from all over the place here today. So, so whether people love you or hate you, they have to realize you are here and you are growing in numbers. Right. And, and I think that's the point of this is that for so long, because of cultural pressure, and you know, it comes from so many things from you know, the, the culture that happens at work because of... And in schools, and universities. And schools and everything, that white people who have an opinion about something, if it might offend someone who's not white or someone who's white who has sensibilities that it might offend, they keep quiet about this and eventually it builds a, a subconscious, if not fully conscious, fear of ever speaking your mind, even on some completely reasonable point. For example, the Google executive who was just fired for his extremely reasonable uh, 
I guess it was an inner office email about, you know, maybe we should rethink some of this diversity hiring stuff. It wasn't even his idea, it was science. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> and, and so what, what, we're, what we're doing, I think, uh, and it started with the big powerhouse websites who just push the narrative right as hard as we can. And now that we're, at, you know, the, doing that and with the internet and having people able to come together on the, on the electronic format where, oh yeah, there are all these other people who think the same way I do. And then the alt-right rises and suddenly you realize, whoa, there are millions of other people who think the way I do. Now we're starting to come out and that's going to make all, and I don't mean that in the normal way, we're starting to come out of the house in groups. <laughs> no, you do mean in the normal way. Well, I mean in the normal way, the heteronormative way. <laughs> but now we're starting to come out and enforce, and the only thing that they have left now is to sick the government on us. It doesn't matter whether the courts, it doesn't matter what the courts say, it doesn't matter what the Constitution says, if they don't like it, they're just going to make up an excuse, shut it down, get violent with everybody, and then the media is going to spin it as something else. And and what you have there is not rule of law. This is like um, organized anarchy directly I'll, from above. I'll tell you right now, I think today proved that the rule of law is dead in America. The fact that there is one set of laws that is applied to the left and another side that is applied to the right. And and that does not spell a good future for America. As far as um, the cultural shift, look, um, racial identity politics is alive and well in America and it has been for decades. Right. But it's been it's been focusing on non-whites, and you know that very well, uh, more so than than most. And and what you have is a bunch of young white men who have been completely drenched in non-white identity politics. And any time that their own race has been brought up, they're told that it's your fault, you're culpable, and, and you basically amount to zero. Um, and and you got that mixed with a whole bunch of young men with lots of testosterone uh, flowing through their veins. And this is, I think, um, from a bird's eye, a, a young man's struggle by and large. Um, that, that, that makes a bit of a, an interesting mixture. When you tell them that on top of everything now, that they've got this revelation, this sort of enlightenment, this, this renaissance that is occurring, um, that they can't speak, well, guess what happens historically when you shut people's mouths? They start to resort to fists. Exactly. And, and what else is there? I mean, when, when we step out to speak our minds and we're met with violence and we're not protected from it, we can either lay down and allow ourselves to basically be stomped to death by, you know, the Orwellian boot stamping on your face forever, or we can stand up and oppose it. And the, I think that's the thing that the government and the left uh, and, you know, the establishment media and all that, that's what they're scared to death of. And, and I would like to ask you about this. I, I asked uh, Andrew Anglin about this, but we got cut off. Uh, you know, the, the media portrayal of this has been, it's all they want to talk about. Mm -hmm. and there's it's sexy. Right. And there's footage yeah. of 100% of it from many, many angles that the media has access to. Much of it, I saw them taking myself. But all they will show is like a couple of seconds right before this battle at this monument last night the torch right, torchlight thing and a couple of seconds of people battling in the street in front of this thing today they don't show what set it off they don't show what happened and then they have talking heads come on and just explain to you what you're supposed to believe happened Context is irrelevant in today's media, right? Um, all that matters is narrative, and we know that the cultural Marxists own the media, we know that they own academia, etc., and they're pushing a particular narrative, and if you speak against it, well, then they'll have the full force of the state and federal government ahead of, uh, on you. And, and I will say this is something that I echoed on Stefan Molyneux's channel earlier today. Um, I do not think it is outside of the realm of what's possible that within the next five to ten years we will probably closer to five, we will have alt-right um, men and women running for political office. Yes. And, and, and And I think that, again, love you or hate you, um, people would be fools to ignore you. Absolutely. We will not be ignored. And, and that's the bottom line. Uh, once you have awakened the sleeping lion, you're in trouble. And I believe that lion's been awakened. And, uh, you know, England compares this to the beer hall push. And I think that's correct. This is the event 
that is going to set things in motion where all the rest of the people who think the way we think and feel the way we feel are going to decide that their normie jobs and their mortgages and their reputation at the country club and all that are no longer important enough for them to remain silent because this is about the future of our people. This is about a place for our children and their children and, uh, and the traditions that have been left down to us. And in just a couple of generations, everything traditional, everything that has been believed in by this society have been completely torn asunder Amen. and we finally have a movement that is willing to stand up and say it and articulate it clearly and intelligently this is why America this is the new Berlin we have been completely steeped in all that is debaucherous degenerate pornographic salacious self-indulgent and repugnant and there are people look uh, traditionalism does not exist because uh, it's just time tested and true because it's real and I believe that uh, it is part of the human um, psyche and heart that we yearn for uh, we hunger for, for truth and, and folks are now waking up to it despite decades of lies being rammed down our throats. Absolutely and that is a great point you make and with that point unfortunately and I hope you will come on my show sometime and do the full two hours with me so that uh, we can really get in depth and talk about the reporting you do and you some of these that. issues but uh, I'm going we're gonna have to move along but before we do go ahead you you are a reporter for rebel media that's right, right. you can follow me at Twitter at faith Goldie rebel media or um, on, on, on YouTube I appreciate you having okay. me and, and I just have one question for you and, and my listeners would not Forgive oh, me if I didn't I'm, ask I'm you. waiting for it, baby. Okay, no, it's an easy one. Yeah. Have you ever seen Ezra Levant mix meat and dairy? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you that if you, if you um, and this is something that he agrees with, if you ever offer him free um, bacon, it's a real, it's like free bacon. Free bacon. Anyway. It's real. <laughs> um, uh, no, I don't think, I think that he keeps kosher. I don't know. But I will say this. Ezra Levant knows where I stand on a lot of issues, and he has afforded me a tremendous amount of freedom. That's great. And, and I just want to thank you once again. I know it's a really big deal for uh, somebody in your position with, in as large, uh, you're not mainstream media, you're alternative media, but you're very large alternative oh, media. You. Thank you. Uh, to come on this show, uh, I was just shocked when you walked in here and I was told that you were willing to come on the Crypto Report and uh, I'll, I'll, I'm in your debt forever. No, hey, everybody, let's have a hand. Yeah.